All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to scrape some financial statistics or information on particular stocks from Finviz. All right, so on the site, I'm just gonna pick any random ticker. So we'll go with Tesla. And the info or statistics we're gonna scrape will be this table here. So what I did was I just highlighted a value and then right click and click inspect. So once this script gets loaded up, I scrolled up until you see the whole table highlight towards the left. So when this table gets highlighted, that's the X path we're gonna end up copying. So it should be this one. So then right click again and click copy X path. So that's all we need from Finviz. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this. So on this left hand side, you'll see the script and the console on the right. So I actually have coded up a function for this already, but let's compare the X path to the one I have in here. So I'm just gonna paste it right underneath. So we see that for the X path, it's essentially the same. I just went ahead and remove the T body and you should be able to find the table that way. So that's if you wanna scrape tables from Finviz, you can go that route. But for the actual function, I'm putting a system sleep. So right off the bat, when you call this function, it will set the script to sleep for five seconds. And that's just in case you're requesting multiple tickers at a time. Finviz won't block your IP address. And the URL is just the Finviz website and the ticker you pass in. So it'll go to that specific page for that particular ticker you're requesting data for. I'm gonna go ahead and read HTML. So then I'll pass in this HTML script into HTML nodes and find this particular X path and then convert it into a actual table. I then row bind the results. You'll see that this looks kind of weird and this is just because of the formatting of the page. But once you row bind this, you'll get a nice looking data frame. I then added some column names for that particular data frame and added the system date as well. And then after I transpose this data frame, I just returned that table. So if we go ahead and minimize this function, I'm gonna go ahead and run it on the console. So now we'll request some data for Moderna. So let's see what the data looks like. So we have the ticker, the date, and all the metrics you see from that page. So now that we see that it works, let's request data for a couple of tickers. So here I'm gonna assign a list, a character list. So I'm just gonna put a couple of tickers. So let's do Tesla, Apple, and Google. Now this next function will pass the list of tickers as a list to the function we just created. And you'll notice that I have this try function here. That's just in case it can't find the ticker, it won't actually crash. So let's go ahead and run that. So we'll get a nice progress bar here. We just have to wait those five seconds. All right, so after that's done running, I'm gonna go ahead and row bind the results. And this function is from data table. So if we take a look at the results. So now we have three rows with all the data for the tickers we are requesting data for. So we can't do calculations with some of these columns just because they contain special characters such as the percentage sign, or if we wanna compare by market cap, we can't since these are actual characters. So I developed this function called format K and B, which formats thousands, millions, and billions so that we can actually compare market caps, incomes, or sales. And all it's doing is just replacing the K, the M, or the B with the appropriate number of zeros. So we go ahead and run this function. So I will then format all of these columns to numeric and apply that function that we just ran to the appropriate columns, which would just be market cap, income, and sales, I believe. Also, I will format this earnings column, which is the expected earnings release for that particular company. So if you see AMC, that's after the market closes, and the one for before is BMO, before market open. So in either of these cases, you will want to replace it with a time that represents before the market opens and after the market closes for your particular time zone. All right, so I'm gonna format all of these columns. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in the console. So if we take a look at our data frame now, you will now see that these are now in the appropriate format. For the 52 week range, and I believe the volatility range, I added separate columns. So I ended up splitting these numbers into two and pasting them towards the end of this data frame. So you'll see the 52 week range and you'll also see the 52 week high and the 52 week low. So I ended up splitting these two numbers 
and creating separate columns for them along with the volatility. Volatility for the week and volatility for the month, which is this column here. So depending on what you want to do with this data, you can save this as a CSV file. I prefer to save mine as an RDS file just because it's easier for me to read back into R. But if you want to save it as a CSV file, you would just run this final line. Just specify the path and the file name. So this concludes this video, guys. I will post the script on GitHub and leave the link down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.